Um, the, the benefit of Adobe Lightroom is it's a complete workflow manager. So you can organize your files, you can catalog your files, you can uh, arrange your files, sort your files, edit your files, and then output your files in, into a way. Okay? Um, Lightroom is a modular program. So when you first look at it, it might look quite complicated. But if you take those modules one module at a time, it becomes much, much easier. <clears throat> so if we just have a look up here, and we'll start off by making a catalog in a second. But if we just have a quick look up here, you can see that we have, uh, so here we see we've got seven modules. <clears throat> okay, And I'll just run through them really, really briefly for you. Uh, the library module is what essentially is um, Adobe Bridge. It's a file management and a workflow manager. Okay, that's where you do the boring hard work. Okay, um, develop is in essence camera raw in Photoshop. That's where you can develop and edit your picture. So those two modules are the interesting modules that you want. Okay, map. Okay, map's quite cool. You can geolocate your pictures. So you can put your pictures on a certain location on a map. Uh, book, that's also all right. If you guys, actually, what do you guys do with your photos at the end of your trip? Where, impress our friends. Impress your friends? How do you impress your friends? Where, where do you put them? Okay, so, so based on screens, that's cool. Facebook, so on screens again. Does anyone print their work? Maybe we should, okay, cool. Maybe we should start printing here. You can print a book. So this uses, um, they have links with a company called Blurb. They're a, a US company. Um, Blurb. They make, sorry? Blurb. Blurb, yeah, Blurb. You can just go blurb.com. There's some awesome books there that you can make. And this will help you. I can show you again, maybe one of our later sessions, how to make a book. Um, and it really does help you make a book, and you can order it all through this. You don't have to use Blurb. You can export PDFs and make it in another way if you want to. You can also, um, you don't have to use iMovie to make your uh, slideshows. There's a slideshow manager here. So you can make all your slideshows in this if you wanted to. There's also um, an extremely powerful print module. So if anybody has their own home printer, I don't anymore. Um, I use a printing company to print all my work. That way I can just give them a file and all the, fi all the management of that is down to them. I find it much more cost effective to do that and much better, it's less stress. Um, and then also there's a web module. So if any of you um, have your own websites, you can FTP directly to your website from this program, okay? Uh, so it's, it's an absolutely vast program that does more than just photos, okay? We will literally be using the, the library and develop module. Okay, I, will, I can show you some of the others, but they're not of mass importance for you. They're really not. So instantly, you're taking seven modules of this huge program down to only two. Okay, so instantly you've cut and thrown away tons of it. Um, what I'm going to try and show you is the way that I do things in Lightroom. There are probably a dozen ways to do any one task, but I'm going to show you the way that I do a task. The way that I do a task is not necessarily uh, the best way for you to do that task. What you need to do is go away from these sessions with what I've told you and try and develop your own workflow and your own way of doing something. Because um, even talking already to James, the way we catalogue files is very different to each other. Um, I'm going to try and show you what I think is going to be a, a neat and easy way to catalogue. Okay? So let's start this off um, by talking about how I kind of catalog and save files. And then what I'm going to do is I'm just going to show you a folder um, that I've already started downloading to, and we're going to make that folder ourselves. So you can see this folder here. Uh, I just call this Lembe Capturing Critters. Um, if I open that folder up, um, in here you will see, uh, in fact, actually, Oh, that's fine. Um, in here, you will see, uh, let's forget those items for a second. 
uh, you'll see three things. This is the actual Lightroom catalog file. So if I want to come and open up that catalog file, I'll just double click on that and it will open up for me. Um, this one isn't so important, put that down here. And in here, this dated folder, this 2020 folder, if I open that up, you can see there are individual days that I've been here, okay? And it's already making me folders, dated folders with my content in it, okay? And you can see I can open those up and those there are my raw files um, from that day in there, okay? Um, now, if you read the books, they will tell you not to do it this way. And the reason why I do it this way is because it becomes a simple and easy folder for me to uh, pick up, put on a, a pen drive, put on a hard drive, and transport somewhere. If I was to keep my catalog files and all my pictures separately, it should, then when I'm away, it becomes problematic when you're t um, trying to find all of your stuff together. What this does mean, though, this does have a inherent problem. If you wanted to search your catalogue later on for a particular picture, it's much, much harder because you'll need to search individual folders. But for me, I find this much, much easier to manage and work with by keeping it in this way. And we'll, we will make this system now, okay? So what I just want to do is start up Lightroom. And when you start up Lightroom, uh, oh, by the way, yeah, this is a, a big, biggie, okay? Lightroom, Adobe in all of their wisdom, now have two different versions of Lightroom, okay? And they're not just incremental versions like version 2, 3, 4. They have Lightroom um, CC and Lightroom Classic, okay? I get quite a lot of people coming to workshops with me and downloading CC because they think that, that's the one they should be using. Um, it's kind of like a cloud-based version. For us as underwater photographers, in places that we hardly ever get internet or work in, you know, can't get that kind of cloud storage stuff, it's absolutely pointless, okay? It just does not work for what we need, okay? So when you subscribe to Adobe, download the classic version. I hope to God they keep this going uh, because this has everything in it that you need. The CC version really is, seems to be a cut down version that doesn't really have all of the tools in your new. Does anyone here use CC? Do you like it? No, CC. Oh, cloud-based? Yeah, the cloud-based one. No? Yeah, exactly. You want to keep everything with you and, and there. Yeah, exactly. It's, it's much, much easier. So anyway, let's start this off. Imagining that we are fresh, we haven't downloaded or imported any pictures at all, and we're going to set it up. So um, I would go into um, File and say New Catalog. It will ask me to name this catalog. Now I would generally name this catalog the trip I'm on. So you can see before I'd name one uh, Lembe Capturing Critters. Um, but let's, um, let's just call this for argument's sake um, Critters Workshop. Okay. I don't know why that's all in caps. Um, and I just, it doesn't really matter, but for, for ease of use, I just put it on my desktop, just so I can see it. I try and keep my desktop as clean, as simple as possible. So when I get home, I take everything off my desktop and then clean it off again. Uh, and then just hit create. What that'll do, that'll shut down whatever Lightroom catalog you have open at the time, create a new folder, and open up a new catalog for you. And if I just pull this off, you can see, there we go. It's opened up a new, it's created a new folder for me. In here, you can see is that catalog file. These are temp files, these will disappear. Um, these are also working data files. So don't worry too much about those. Okay, so we're ready to go. Let's import our pictures. Um, try not to drag and drop. When you drag and drop things, you're never really sure what it's doing. So it's better to do it the long way, the long hand way of doing it. So up to file and let's say um, import uh, photos and video. Yes, this will do video, okay? But it will catalog your video only. You cannot edit your video in here. So for those togs about us who shoot mainly um, stills, but capture the odd video, 
this is quite cool because you can keep the videos in the same place. Okay. Um, so up this comes, this is the import window. Um, I'm just going to go through and, and search my, input, my images. What I've done is I've taken all the images from my last dive here, which is on Hairball, and just put them in. I haven't even looked at these pictures yet, so you're going to see all my pictures raw uh, as when I see them. So you can see how embarrassed I am by my rubbish. Um, normally, you would plug your card in, and this will automatically pop up um, for you. Okay, so you don't even have to pop it up. So I'm just going to locate that so I know that I've just put them there. So here are all the pictures. Um, the first thing we need to talk about is how do you import them? Um, what kind of format you use? Now, there are four different ways here to, to bring your images into Lightroom. And it's important that you use the correct one. Now, I'm actually going to... Um, Pretend I am completely Arabic and read um, from right to left instead of our way from left to right. Because ad selected. Okay, what ad will do, it will leave the pictures in their current location and add a thumbnail to my Lightroom catalog. That's quite dangerous, isn't it? Because what if you have taken those off a SD card, which you plugged into the side, so you put it on an SD card, You've added it, and then you take your SD card out, put it back in your camera. What does that mean to Lightroom? Those pictures are gone. Okay? So, do not use that. The worst thing is, if you put those pictures back in your camera, and go, oh, well, I've imported those, I'll format my card now. Okay? So they're all gone. Ah, well, since we're talking about uh, formatting and backing up and all that kind of stuff. Oh, no, actually, no, there's something else in a minute. I'm getting ahead of myself. Uh, the next one, let's, let's move to the next one next to it. Move. Let's move to move. This is getting better. So move photos to new location and add to the catalogue. Sounds like you're getting to the right thing. But still no, because what happens, they take them from their current location, move them into the Lightroom catalogue, and then delete them from their old location. To me, that sounds a bit dangerous. Okay? The computer is... Um, telling is automatically deleting your pictures so you really do not want to use this either okay so straight away there's two move and add that you don't want to use copy that sounds much much better so I'm gonna copy it from its current location and put it into its new location that I'm gonna select in a minute coming on next there is also copy as DNG. DNG is Adobe's version of RAW. It stands for Digital Negative File. Okay. Um, it is said in many of the books and blogs um, and papers that come out from Adobe that a DNG works much, much faster in, uh, than the, than the um, standard camera RAW format. So if you wanna, want to speed your machine up, save it as a DNG. The problem is those files are a lot bigger, okay? So it converts them to a DNG, and it also increases the file size. There is also another problem, and why I have stopped using it. There's lots of competitions out there. Not that I'm a prolific competition enterer, but there's lots of competitions out there that want you to enter your raw file when you enter the competition. Many of them will not, ex uh, will not accept a DNG file. So you've got to keep your original RAW files from your camera, um, as well as your DNG file. And that can just get a bit messy. Yeah? So if I can give no attention to which one of those I'm using, but if they're still on my card and they're still on my machine, would I just get lucky and have a little bit of Maybe. The standard, as you saw there when I opened that up, is add. Okay. Uh, so you just want to double check. And we can have a look where your files are and where they've been saved, in which manner. It might be that you want to start afresh from now on, from all your dive now on, and start importing them in this way, just to be sure. Um, but we can have a look and see what you've done. That's easy. That's easily done. So the best way is copy? One of the copies. One of the copies. If you've got a slower computer, it might be you want a, a DNG. Um, but I've just gone now and just say copy, and it keeps a Canon, it's CR2 file, 
Um, that's the raw format, and it just copies the raw format over. Um, and it's just, uh, I don't notice it being slower. I didn't notice DNG being faster. I don't know if my other pros use DNG. No, 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 okay. It, it is said that DNG is supposed to be faster, but uh, make your own minds up. So, see, mm. just the They're on your card still, and you need to get them off your card before you delete them. So you just need to make sure. When you plug in your card next time, see what comes up and see what says at the top. That will be whatever your default has been. So now I've set it for this catalog, it's going to be copy every single time. No, they have all the data. Okay. <clears throat> and we'll, we'll talk about previews and things in a moment as well. So say you've set all that up. That's all cool. You've, we've set that up. Um, let's have a look. Oh, look. I'm almost... I've only got 10 minutes left. This is how... Oh, 10 to. Anyway, let's try and get through some of this um, before I can find somewhere easy to pause. Um, okay. So with Lightroom, I find the best way is to start at the top in any menu and just work your way down. Okay, I find that's the easiest, easiest way. Um, the first thing, you'll, uh, when you first open this, you'll probably find that all of these are collapsed um, like this. Um, just open them up. Okay, so just open up all these windows, just so you can see them. I know we've had a conversation, I can't remember who it was with the other day. They like to see things collapsed. I like to see them all open, so I can see everything. So start at the top and work your way down. Um, so let me talk to you in brief about this. Uh, smart previews. Smart previews are the ability to keep your files uh, offline, so say the ad thing, and still work on your files somewhere. So you can still work on them constantly. Um, I don't like smart previews because it just makes InDesign bulkier and more cluttered. Um, it uses up more space. So I tend not to use it. I don't ever have my files offline, okay? Um, this is quite important. Don't import suspected duplicates. So if you've got a 128 gig card in your camera, you don't want to import the same files again and again and again and then go through and delete them, do you? You want the computer to, to distinguish between files you've already imported and ones that are brand new. So make sure that you have do not import um, sus uh, suspected duplicates selected. Okay? Okay. This, I think, is an important one, okay? Make a second copy to. What do we say about a digital file, about backups? A digital file does not exist unless it exists in how many places? Eight. Eight, well, yeah, definitely. I couldn't see what you're holding up. How many things did you hold up at the back? Was it that? No, what, were you doing that? No. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Um, a digital file does not exist unless it exists in three, three places, okay? Three places. So, when you take your picture, you've got your picture in one location. When you import your picture, you've got your own picture in two, two locations. So on here, make a second copy to is very useful because we can tell it to make a second copy to a location of our choosing. And that, quite often for me, is a separate hard drive I have plugged in, and I'm making that copy to a second, uh, third location. So I've got my um, camera card, I've got my computer, and then I've got an external hard drive. Okay? Yeah. Question. Hmm. Yeah, you know, if, if it works for you, work, work with every strategy works for you. I am, got to say that I was very unlucky and I lost 85,000 images once and I backed up. So I took the folder that was on my hard drive, I put it in my bin, 
And then for some reason, I took the same folder that was on a window that was on my backup and put it in the bin and emptied the bin. So I had two backups, so I had my master and my backup both gone. And that's just, it's human error. So I had 85 images, and I literally realized I was doing it as the bin was emptying. There's nothing you can do at that point. Yeah. When, when that happens, your backup strategy suddenly changes. Yeah. Um, so I, 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 actually, I actually do save my stuff in about four places. So I save it on a cloud storage. I've got my website, which is unlimited storage. Um, I've got all these other backup devices as well. I've got one backup drive that's, that's at my workplace, one backup drive that comes to my home. Um, so I'm really anal about it now. Really, really anal about it now. But there's a, main, there's a good reason for that. OK. So, um, so we're making a second copy too. Um, I'm not going to add a collection. I haven't talked about collections yet. Um, I want to talk about uh, these next couple things. So we're just going to get to importing before I finish today. Um, OK. What is the worst thing about taking pictures or seeing the files? Those goddamn stupid numbers that mean nothing, don't they? They mean absolutely nothing to anybody. OK, there's some generic number that the camera in, um, puts on the files. They're rubbish. So Lightroom will rename your files for you. OK, and this is the bit that I really like. OK, so in here, you tick the box that says rename. And there are some standard things here you might want to choose. But I'm going to show you what I do. What you do is completely up to you. OK. So in here, you can build your file name yourself. OK. Um, so you can see here, I use custom text, the date, and the file name. How do I get that? Well, in here. I say, OK, so I want custom text, so some text that I'm going to enter in, which is unique to the shoot I'm on. I like to put a hyphen between these so you can distinguish between them. You can start to see the file name that's building at the top. Then whatever is important for you. For me, it's the date. OK, so I want to put the date in. For some stupid reason, it uses the month first. I think only odd people do that. I, I don't know any normal person that would, that would put the, date, the month first. Um, just saying, it's, I'm just saying, it's a bit weird, but hey ho. Um, then, um, if I just leave it that way, all the pictures will be the same. Um, then, why don't I just insert the original file name? So, here I'm going to have uh, the custom name where it says untitled, the date, tell me when I took it, so I can look at that file, I know where it is when I took it, and then the original file name as a distinguisher. Okay? So once I've done that, uh, I can say OK. And here, this is where I put in my custom text. Now the thing that you are going to do, you're going to forget to enter in that custom text for the first few times you do it. I guarantee this. So just try and remember. So in here, I might just put um, uh, Lembe, for instance. Then I know that all of these pictures have been taken in Lembe. You might want Lembe Resort, um, capturing critters. You might want something else in there. Okay? You can see down here, it starts to give you, build you up, and show you the file name that it's using. Um, OK. Uh, I'm going to briefly talk about this because I'm going to run out of time. Keywords, keywording. This is the boring bit. Okay. This is the bit that traps people. This is the bit that you forego. This is the bit that you just go past and can't be bothered with because you want to see your pictures. Um, the more time you spend here, the easier it is to locate and catalog your pictures later on. If cataloging, if cataloging your pictures is not important to you, then forget it. Leave it. Okay? But if you want to search your pictures later on for a cardinal fish or, a, or pictures that were taken on a certain dive site or anything else, you need to do this. So how much information you put in there is up to you. So easily, um, I'd put Lembe. Okay? Then I would put a comma to, to go past them. 
So I might want to put um, Lembe Resort. Then I might want to put um, Critters. And then maybe, uh, no, actually, let's put um, Capturing Critters, uh, Workshop. Um, ah, these are all pictures from one dive site. So these are all from Hairball. Um, you may not, um, you may import all the pictures from a day, so you may not be able to do this. These are generic for all the pictures that you're importing at that time. Okay, so all the pictures you're importing at that time. So just imagine that that list can be really big. Okay, um, so you can, this is where it does take a while to actually decide what you want to put in. Then, down here, this is where you're going to save your pictures. So if I come down to this little bit just here, to zoom out, so it's this little bit just at the bottom here. So I, mine have gone on my desktop, and I'm, if you remember at the beginning, I made a folder called, uh, or I made a catalog called Critters Workshop, okay? And if I just click into there, you can see the file structure it's gonna use. It's importing 143 pictures. That's all the pictures I took on that last dive. They're going in a top folder called uh, Critters Workshop, a subfolder called the year 2020, and then a subfolder again with the year, the day, and the 14th month of the year. Yeah, so that's where that's going. Uh, and then, uh, oh, let me just do this very quickly for you. You can choose, to be honest, I import everything, I import absolutely everything. You can choose which pictures to import. So if you didn't want to import that picture, for instance, you uncheck it and you don't have to import it. To be honest, I import everything and delete everything later. Okay? So then we just say, uh, I don't think there's anything here I've forgotten because I'm trying to go a bit quicker. Uh, yep, import. And in come all of our pictures. Now, I will pick up from here tomorrow. Um, these half hour slots aren't particularly uh, that much, that long to do loads and loads of stuff. Uh, I do need to show you to be able to do one thing um, because we are asking uh, in our critiques later on for you to hand in a DNG file if possible. Okay? If possible, please hand in a DNG file. If not, a raw file, or if you've just taken JPEGs, I think a couple of you have just taken JPEGs, that's absolutely fine as well. Um, so, you can see all these pictures come imported, um, and tomorrow you can come and see all my rubbish, okay? So let's just say um, this picture, this out of focus picture here, um, you want to hand in for review. Um, we would go up to File and say Export. Okay, up comes this window. We're going to say Export to a hard drive. Okay, make sure that's selected there. Um, I tend to ha have this turned on where it says export location. Um, choose folder later, that's absolutely fine. Uh, we are asking you to rename the, uh, the files with your name, please. Okay, you can either do that post export by just rename the file, or you can do it here, um, where here we can just say custom name, and here we can just say side, and it will go side one and side two. Um, and then down here, we're going to say file settings. So what we want here is DNG, which stands for negative file, yeah. Everyone's really enthusiastic, aren't they? <laughs> okay, so DNG. Don't worry about any of those settings, we'll be able to read it. Um, and then simply say export. And it will ask you where you want it to go and wherever you want to save it to. Okay? And then come and uh, James will have a memory stick that he'll go around and collect the pictures for our reviews later on today. <laughs>